of Education uh, on Wednesday, March 4th, uh, 2020. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. A pursuit to general provisions Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed sessions at 4.30 p.m. to discuss, appoint, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of employees of whom it's just body has jurisdiction to perform an administrative function, to conduct the matters that relate to negotiations, and to consult the council. Thank you, do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote of the motion to go into closed session. All those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. We'll be back at 6 o'clock. Thank you very much. Good evening, and welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education uh, business meeting on Wednesday, March 4th, 2020. I'd like this time ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Afterwards, we will stand for a moment of silence for our first responders and armed services at home and abroad. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. <clears throat> we have our housekeeping items at the moment. I have an agenda before us. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Aye. Approval of minutes. We have the open and closed meeting minutes from February 5th, the close from February 11th, the open and close from February 12th, and the open and close from February 19th. Do I have a motion to accept these minutes? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Any questions or comments on the, mo uh, the meeting minutes mentioned? Hearing none, I call for the vote of the motion to approve the meeting minutes for the dates that were previously mentioned. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Recognitions right at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome Mr. Mark Anderson to our board. Um, we are very grateful that he was uh, appointed by Governor Hogan to fill in for a vacancy and will be on the ballot for in the November election for the 4th District. And welcome, Mr. Mark. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Just another piece of public service. We have recognitions this evening and Dr. Kane. We do. Board members, please join me up front. It is warm. I have a feeling it'll get warmer. Oh, it's warm in here. <laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. It is always, always a pleasure. I have some awesome uh, recognitions to um, talk about tonight, and our first recognition is for our Spirit Award. We're going in a little bit different order today. This award is presented to an employee who particularly represents the spirit of education. The recipient tonight is Miss Ariel Pinder. Is Miss Pinder here? to you. So you get to stand up here while I read a lot of nice things about you. So uh, this recognition was submitted by Miss Becky Tubman, the assistant principal at Sudlersville Middle School. And this is what she had to say about Miss Pender. I know an educator who is passionate about building relationships with her students, families, and colleagues. This educator exudes positive energy that shines through all of her interactions with people. Many people can understand the content, 
Many people can understand best practices in teaching, but it takes an individual with an understanding of people, a passion for people, to truly make a difference in a school. At Sudlersville Middle, this individual is Miss Arielle Pender. Miss Pender passionately cares about everyone at the school. Her passion ignites enthusiasm amongst our students for not only her content area of science, and I've been in her class, but also an enthusiasm for doing what's right. Her belief in others helps people to believe in themselves. She goes above and beyond in all aspects of Sutlersville Middle School through her work as a grade level team leader, facilitating the student council, volunteering to DJ, all the school dances, <laughs> coaching various PFY teams, and facilitating our summer school program. Ms. Pender brings passion and excitement to many avenues at SMS. Her positive energy makes our school a second home for our students, a place where they feel valued, and a place where they want to be a part. Students, families, and staff speak of Ms. Pender with a smile and with the utmost respect. Her spirit will leave footprints with our students long after they moved on to high school. And this is the very special gift uh, that Ms. Pender brings, and she deserves the Queen Anne's County Public Schools Spirit Award. Please congratulate Ms. Pender. And, and it's, somebody says speech, speech. So Ms. Pender, who did you bring with you? I brought my mother and my father. And so mother and father, please come forward. Did I see your principal in the room? My principal is I located did. here, yeah. I did, and any other staff that are here or friends? Oh yes, all friends? of my, a lot of my staff members are here. They can all come up. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Don. Wow, really? How are you? Mrs. Boone? Come on up, don't be bashful. I think I got everybody. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take that for you. And we're going to take a picture. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ruined it. <laughs> One more. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent. Next, we have our Shining Star Award, and this award recognizes someone in our school system who shines. This week's or this month's recipient is Miss Allison Provanche. Am I saying that correctly? Miss Allison Provanche, come on back up. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and Miss Allison was um, nominated by Christy McNeese, and that is a teacher specialist at Sellersville Middle School. And this is what she had to say. Ms. Provence is a shining star at Sudlersville Middle School. She's the lead of the teacher in our learning support classroom where she's responsible for instructing students in grades six through eight. She is, however, much more than a teacher to her students. On a daily basis, Ms. Provence serves as a teacher, a counselor, a mentor, protector, mediator and role model. She meets every single one of her students with a smile and a listening ear. She meets, yeah, it's not uncommon to see, I was gonna say it again, I can say it again, she meets everyone with a listening ear. Well done. It's not uncommon to see Ms. Provence taking a calming walk with one of her students or to hear her counseling two students as they reconcile differences. She is their safe spot and their home throughout the day. She makes her teaching relevant and accessible to all of her students, and she advocates for them on a daily basis. She is the shining star to all SMS students, but she truly shines brightest in the eyes of her students. Congratulations. Here with you tonight. Um, I also have my parents here as well as a lot of people from my staff who I would love to welcome back up. <laughs> Family and friends, come on back. <laughs> Put you on a little corner over here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
We have two special awards, two Energizer Bunny Awards. So I'm going to ask our sponsors, Mr. Chip Brittingham, Mr. Wayne Humphreys, please to come forward from Bayview Financial. We are so grateful for your partnership for sponsoring every month. Thank you for that. And the recipients of the Energizer Bunny Award is, or well, there two are, Dawn Corsi and Carla Altam. I'm going to say it wrong, Alta Barano. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. And these two Energizer Bunnies were submitted by Mr. Rob Watkins, the principal at Sutlersville Middle School. And this is what he had to say about them. First, we'll start with Ms. Alta Morano. She is always upbeat and positive as the guidance secretary. She is always looking for ways to support the students of Sutlersville Middle. When guidance is busy, she serves as a listening ear and a mentor, helping students to navigate the issues that are troubling them. Mrs. Altamarano is always willing to support our Hispanic community by translating documents and conversations. In November, she served as co-chairperson of our Noche Latino Night. Not, Beth, am I saying that correctly? All right, it's been a while since I've had Spanish. <laughs> but okay, so I got it. To celebrate the Hispanic culture in the community. Mrs. Altamirano is always willing to lend a helping hand in making SMS an awesome place for students. Congratulations. The next is Ms. Dawn Corsi, and she is the hardworking, knowledgeable administrative secretary. Ms. Corsi is the heart and soul of SMS. There are many things that are involved in keeping a school running efficiently, and Ms. Corsi helps with nearly all of them. She is one of the first friendly faces that you see when you arrive at SMS, and nearly everyone knows her. Her can-do attitude, combined with her amazing work ethic, makes her an integral part of the SMS team. Routinely, she serves as a mentor, role model, problem solver, and mediator. She's a self-starter and organized like no other. Ms. Corsi is a smiling face that many students seek out each day, and she makes everyone around her better. Now that has got to be the most, the ultimate compliment. Ms. Corsi and Ms. Altamirano are excellent examples of Energizer Bunnies, employees that just keep going and make it happen every single day. Well done. And who do you have? Well, we know we have your principal. We know we have, come on down, family and friends. Yep, that's it. Okay. My husband and my daughter. Okay, come on down, family and friends. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the first person to <laughs> Definitely not least, 
we have an unsung hero award. So the Sutlersville Elementary staff would like to nominate Ms. Tony Davidson for the Queen Anne's County Public Schools Unsung Hero Award. Ms. Tony is a wonderful employee who is so deserving of this award of recognition. Please come forward. <laughs> Ms. Davidson is a paraeducator at Sellersville Elementary School and has worked with all grade levels. This year she's working with Mrs. Bennett's kindergarten class. Ms. Tony is hardworking and dedicated to her job at SES. In addition to hardworking, Ms. Davidson is very caring and always looking out for students. Now here's a specific example. On February 12th, while on lunch duty, Ms. Davidson and another paraeducator notice a kindergarten student choking and turning purple. Ms. Davidson quickly performed the Heimlich maneuver and was able to prevent a possible catastrophe. Once the student was checked out by the school nurse, he asked if he could give Ms. Davidson an award. The student presented her with a positive referral for safety <laughs> and for being a lifesaver. <laughs> Sudlersville Elementary School is indeed very fortunate to have Ms. Davidson on our team. She goes above and beyond to help everyone. This incident is a true reminder of how dedicated she is to the students of Sellersville Elementary School, and we are all so very grateful for her quick response mm -hmm. in helping to save a child's life. I know I could cry too. <laughs> And Ms. Davidson, who do you have with you, Sutlersville crew? Come on back down. And Bob. And Bob. And Bob. Right. Do what I say, middle. Did I say middle? Elementary. Okay, you you come in, Miss Pender. We can we can get some. Okay, all right. I didn't know if they came up through. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so I, I did want to say one thing though before we do, do our pictures, before we all just turn into a pool of tears here. Um, Mom said, and Dad said that it's okay that we let everyone know that Lucas is the student that Miss Tony saved, helped to save. Lucas's brother, and what's baby's name? Reese. And Reese, Lu Lucas's baby brother. And mom and dad, and all the family, and of course, um, Mr. Davidson. Yep, so we've got everybody here and so grateful for that. Now we can do the two. Does it for our recognitions for tonight? Thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Yeah, you don't want to talk about it. Here. As we have people filing out, we are going to continue with our <coughs> agenda. Uh, 4.01, board involvement. Um, 
any of the board members would like to bring up anything that they from the last month. Captain, Captain Kelly, can I start with you? Uh, just a couple things in a lot of May meetings because we're learning a lot about how um, Kerwin is moving forward. Um, and also there was a legislative breakfast and um, I spoke with Mr. Um, Jacobs and um, Mr. Aarons. There were two um, Jay Jacobs from Jake Jacobs and, uh, and Steve, Steve Aarons. Aarons, right, our representatives on that. Um, and they just, we spoke briefly about Kerwin and the problems that we're all facing on it. Um, but what a good, great program it'll be if we can get it funded and uh, passed. So the other thing we did, which was really enjoyable, I went with Mr. Paluski and we attended um, Monday night the uh, Blue Ribbon School celebration for Bay Bayside Elementary School. And it was a wonderful uh, experience. They, um, it was, it was where the uh, re the governor's staff recognizes um, the the um, Blue Ribbon schools, and um, so many representatives were there from Bayside, and, and especially the principal. Um, and we really had a, they honored them quite a bit. They read off all the bay. There were only. Six. Six. Six out of the state of Maryland. And where was this held? That. It was held at the Governor Calvert House, um, which is right across from the state building. It was a great reception for them. Yes. And they really honored them quite a bit. And I understand from the principal that she, they're working on the paperwork to try to compete for the National Blue Ribbon School. That would be awesome. Instead. So I don't know if you had any more of that, it was fabulous. It was. Thank yeah, you. Okay. I attended uh, the celebration of the Kennard African American Museum uh, this past Saturday. Uh, it is Black History Month and uh, my good friend, uh, I call him Reverend Clayton Washington, but he's really not. But uh, it was a wonderful experience. I got to meet Shannon's father, find out that she's been very good and an active member here. And uh, it was a, an enlightening experience. Uh, the Kennard School uh, was once upon a time the only school African Americans could attend from grade one through 12. And you would be surprised at how recent that has occurred. Uh, and had been changed. Anyway, uh, it was a wonderful experience and I was glad to be there. Thank you so much. Dr. King? Absolutely. Um, February was a busy time and March promises to be as busy. So I had uh, my student staff and parent advisory council meetings in the beginning of February. Our students are engaged in a statewide art competition for Mental Health Awareness Week, which is May 3rd through 9th. And that's hosted by Maryland's First Lady, uh, Miss Yumi Hogan. Um, and the project is part of the Children's Mental Health Matters campaign. So our students will be engaged in that. <coughs> I also attended the Sutlersville Middle School African American Heritage Night and that's always a, a great evening and we have lots of food and, and performances and the students are helping to, to organize and to serve. It's a great event, well done, Sutlersville Middle. We had lots of different uh, school monitoring visits which Mr. P will probably touch on. Of course we had our monthly collaboration meeting with our, our county commissions or commissioners and just like to um, give a shout out to our county commissioners who gifted ten thousand dollars to Bayside Elementary School for their blue ribbon honor so that was a great thing that they were able to do. Um, I had the um, AASA conference I attended in San Diego in the middle of February it was great uh, keeps me abreast of lots of leading issues in education um, and one particular session that I attended was on legal matters as they pertain to to superintendents it was a great um, session and that was uh, facilitated by one of Maryland's school um, Council lawyers, and, and that's Marie Sneed. Great event. And we also had uh, the state board meeting, which um, that was on the 25th, and Captain Kelly was there for that. And on the 26th, we had the Toy Prize Patrol. Mr. P accompanied me to deliver prizes and deliver the information about our Teacher of the Year finalists. That was a great day. <clears throat> Mr. P also accompanied me to uh, Mattapique Elementary School for the STEM Fair. 
um, in, in March, there are a couple of events that I want to make sure that everybody is aware of. So uh, I may miss one or two, but these are, are some that uh, just uh, were, that came across my desk or are on my calendar. On Friday, and I know Ms. Schuyler is going to say something about this, the Kent Island High School uh, will have their, start their production of The Wiz, The Wizard of Oz, I'll call it. And that's going to run this weekend and next weekend. So Mr. Uh, Ms. Bass is going to accompany me on Friday evening for that one and on Saturday the Upper Shore Regional History Day is going to be held at Washington College looking forward to that that's five counties involved in that one and our students will have their their are I mean their uh, history projects on display on the 12th we will do some orientation for Mr. Anderson my exec team and I on the 19th that's the Midshore Youth Summit at Chesapeake College. I'll give remarks for that and we do have students that will be attending that event from Queen Anne's County as well as some surrounding counties. On the 21st, our very first ever Queen Anne's County Faculty Art Show. So our own art teachers will have their art on display um, at the Queen Anne's Arts Council. So look forward to that. And in addition to that, in the local newspapers, our arts team of the week you'll find. Art Scene 2020 for both high schools on April 21st at Queen Anne's High School, on April 23rd at Kent Island High School. And we'll talk about that again uh, because we want to make sure that we that is well attended. It was last year and it was an outstanding event. On March 23rd, that's a night in Annapolis for District 36. That's with our uh, elected officials, Steve Hershey, Steve Ahrens, Jeff Greist, and Jay Jacobs. On the 24th, a very special day, and our board members received this invitation. And that is Sodexo's night for hosting the annual Future Chefs Competition. Mr. Pender had one of his daughters as a part of that last year. It was, it's a great event. I'll be a judge and looking for others to join me as judges, whether it's exec team or school board members. On the 20, I'm sorry, on the 31st, again, our student, um, advisory council, staff advisory, parent advisory, but our students will be participating in a Sunday supper, although it won't be on Sunday. It's going to be on March 31st. That's our regular day to meet, and we'll have lunch with some of our business um, owners from Queen Anne's County. And uh, lastly, but certainly not least, on the 28th, that's the Sudlersville High School Alumni Association Annual Banquet. That will be at Sudlersville Middle School at 5 p.m. Great. Mr. Pluski. Thank you, uh, President Harper. Just summarize a few things. Um, Valentine's Day uh, on the 14th, I had the honor to represent Dr. Kane as well as uh, many of the board members and swearing in uh, of Mr. Anderson in a new courthouse. So welcome again, Mr. Uh, Anderson. On the 20th, I had the opportunity to attend the Southersville Elementary School Family Night. was extremely well attended. Uh, a lot of the activities with the PFY program, very outstanding. Um, as the superintendent mentioned, we are now doing our winter monitoring visits uh, to each of our schools. So we've now been to five of our schools. So look forward sometime in May uh, for us to give you a, another report an update. And I'd also like to mention something that's coming up that's very, very unique, and that will be on Friday, March the 13th. Queen Anne's County Public Schools has entered into a partnership with the Maryland Insurance Administration in building awareness around a host of careers in the insurance field. So we'll be meeting with uh, local providers, with the business community, and Chesapeake College for potential opportunities for uh, youth apprenticeships, internships programs, as well as potentially um, students that can actually get a degree in risk management um, at the University of Baltimore. So we look forward to that partnership uh, on the 13th. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much. Anyone else need to add anything? Yeah, I do. Just, uh, I'd like to make a comment with regard to um, any update on uh, coronavirus. As we all know, that is um, forefront in the news right now. Um, so just a brief update. On January 29th, I sent a letter to families and to employees explaining our efforts to prevent um, the spread of illness. So the Center for Disease Controls 
um, still indi indicates that the uh, immediate risk of infection is low. However, I just like to reassure families uh, and employees and the public that we continue to take measures to prevent the spread of illness. Our custodial staff uh, continues to spend additional time disinfect <laughs> disinfecting high touch areas. We're talking about doorknobs, uh, door handles, light switches, phones, desks, those kinds of things, uh, as well as disinfecting throughout the classroom, bathrooms, and other high traffic areas. We continue to follow guidance from the Center for Disease Control. I'm talking about washing hands frequently. Uh, they recommend for at least 20 seconds using hand sanitizer if soap is not available, soap and water, disinfecting surfaces, covering noses and mouths uh, with a tissue or cloth when sneezing and coughing, uh, staying away uh, from sick people or, or keeping children and, and, and adults home if they are sick. I've spoken with Dr. Ciatola um, from the Queen Anne's County Health Department and he confirms the information that we've already shared, stressing preventative measures that I just mentioned. Uh, the Queen Anne's County Health Department website also has information about the coronavirus and the flu. We don't want to leave that out. Uh, there are lots of resources there that can be um, accessed by the public, so please do take a look. Uh, a reminder that Queen Anne's County Health Department does monitor our school's attendance. So when we start to approach the 20% mark uh, for absences due to illness, they are taking a look and they are giving us um, indication as to whether or not we need to start considering closing schools. Uh, and, and if that happens, we would be doing deep cleaning for a number of days, but that we have not reached that. We've got a couple of schools that are about 10 or 11 percent, uh, but we have not approached anywhere close to 20. Um, so we are monitoring that. And the only updates that he had, uh, and you can find this on CDC website or the Queen Anne's County Health Department website is the travel alerts was China and Italy, but now they've <coughs> added Iran and South Korea uh, if people have traveled there in the last 14 days. Um, so states also, he wanted us to, to know that states also now have the ability to conduct local testing. So before it was only out of one location and it took several days or weeks to get the results back, but now that states can do their own testing, it's a 24-hour turnaround for results. So we'll be working um, with district leaders to uh, come up with any type of plans. It's a little bit uh, less stressful for us because we are one-to-one -one in the event that we need to put plans into place for e-learning so that our students can continue to to learn if we are forced to close schools so for right now that's what we have uh, there are several departments and agencies that are providing guidance and support to local superintendents and school districts uh, uh, MSDE the Maryland Association of Boards of, um, of School Boards everybody is is giving information and and offering to support so we are doing our our, our very best to make sure that we uh, prevent the spread of illness and, and are prepared in the event that something <coughs> happens. Okay, thank you so much. Our student reports start with Ms. Pedraza. So as Dr. Kane already said, this Friday night we're opening the Wizard of Oz, which they've been working very hard on, and it'll also be showing Saturday at 7, Sunday at 2, and then the same times next week on the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Spring sports just started on March 1st, and all teams are looking forward to a great season. Um, this Friday, our progress reports will be coming out to families. On March 26th, we'll be holding our annual prom expo, which is a very fun event for seniors. Wrapping up the school year, getting excited for prom, we hold our annual Mr. and Mrs. Ken Island competitions. And then on March 19th, we have spring sports pictures, and that on that evening will be our winter sports award banquet. Um, and lastly, I would like to congratulate our basketball team for making it through the first round of playoffs last night, and Ms. Amber Wright for being a Teacher of the Year finalist. Yes, she is. Yay. I understand that uh, March 14th, Ken Island High School is holding the SAT. Yes, we have the SAT that day, which is a great opportunity for QACPS families. I think it's April 14th. Is that? Um, uh, I think this the ours might be April. By, hmm? I think ours might be April. Okay. <coughs> I didn't know it was March. Thank you. Okay. For letting me know. All right. Thank you so much. And Ms. Phillips, how are you? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. 
Um, like Sailor said, spring sports has started in the last week for us, and um, along with spring sports and some obstacles with field sharing, there's only one turf and everyone wants a chance to use it. I know there's been some concerns about the lacrosse team practicing while tracks running, just some safety concerns with, you know, lacrosse and that Ball's kind flying. of thing. Yeah, so we've been working that out, which is exciting because, you know, we all get a run. And I think we're trying to do times when um, the lacrosse team can come out when track's not on the track as much just for to lighten those safety concerns. Uh, basketball, they were also in playoffs, as Skyler said. Ken Island made it through first round. Our boys team didn't make it through their first game. But I think girls play tonight, so we'll see how that goes. Right. Yesterday we had our honor roll breakfast, which is exciting. It's good that the PTA puts that on for students to recognize the hard work that um, students do throughout the school year with grades and attendance, so that was very nice. And then Thursday, February 27th, we had our ladies' night, which was hosted by the cosmetology students, which is just a time for people to come out. It was like a little spa night, and they did that, so that was very nice of them. And our musical also opens Friday at 7. It's Your Good Man, Charlie Brown, so I know they're working very hard. They're currently in tech week, so that's 8 p.m. night, so I know they're putting in a lot of effort for that. The band goes to District Band Festival next Wednesday on the 11th, so that's going to be great. I know that the band's been working really hard. And like Skyler was saying, we're all just looking forward to the end of the year, especially for seniors with spring break next month and our prom, which is also next month, which seems very close, but it's very exciting that's stuff. That's interesting that your prom is so early because normally it's, it's like the May 13th hey, yeah. or 20th. Historically, yeah, and then prom for Ken Island is the last April 25th. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, that's good. At least they're separating it. Yeah, I can remember years past where they tried to have them on the same night, it was <laughs> bedlam. All right, well, thank you very much, and I look forward to attending both of the plays. Mm -hmm. Being a former drama mama, it's uh <laughs> near and dear to my heart. So, thank you all very much. We now have citizen participation public comment, Mr. Smith. Okay, uh, we well, all speakers keep in mind the following. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to the matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure the appropriate staff members respond to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey all messages freely, but I ask the courtesy of this board and our citizens to show respect for all. And the first person I have signed up is Mr. Conley. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, sir, would you state your name and your address? My name is Sean Connolly. I live at 607 Old Point Drive, Chester. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all for having me. Um, let me speak. Um, I said, my name is Sean Connolly. I sent you all an email a couple weeks ago uh, detailing my efforts in starting a clay target league at Ken Island High School. Uh, so I'm here tonight um, to plead last ditch effort to get some approval and uh, answer some questions if you have them. Um, the process started about four months ago. Uh, it all started with a Facebook post. I saw something from the league, it interests me. Um, put out the questionnaire, they sent me the information on how to start a team. Uh, seemed very simple. Um, talked to the AD, it was the first step. Um, I figured in this political climate it could go one of two ways. He'd say, no way, you're going to get a team started at any public school. Um, but it went the opposite. It, it went very well. I was very um, encouraged that uh, given the climate over here, there's a lot of outdoorsmen, um, that this would be a perfect place to start. Um, second step was to find a club, and uh, we went to Sutlersville. Uh, trap club. They're uh, more than ha uh, happy to, to include us in their uh, with their club. Uh, they're extending the member benefits to all the team members. Um, so third step was an open house. We held an open house. We had uh, 27 students. It's now up to uh, 29 that have showed interest. Um, one of them is even an eighth grader. Uh, he wants to get an early start. Um, Two, two of the students that attended the Ken Island High School actually would go to uh, Queen Anne's 
but they saw the Facebook post that I put out, so they were interested as well. Um, the fourth step is what where we're at now. We need uh, school approval. Um, the way the league details it, they don't um, dictate who needs to approve it. They leave that up to the jurisdictions. So I've been working with AD um, Harding at Cannon Island um, and Mr. Pender um, to get answers as quick as we can um, to alleviate some of the the issues with with having such a league, um, which I fully understand. Um, but it's just we're coming to the end of the road. Um, deadline for registration is March 23rd, and our first uh, practice is scheduled to start March 28th. If we can get started. Uh, so uh, I'm here to, like I said, to plead our effort and uh, plead our case. And uh, looking for one of the board members to possibly put a motion forward to approve the team. Thank you. Thank you very much. District Nation, we don't take questions answered this time, but we're well aware of what's going on with all the information you've sent us. It's been very, very helpful, and Mr. Pender's right on top of it, and we've had discussions. He'll yeah, get in touch with you. you this week. What's that? He'll get in touch with you this week. Oh. Mr. Pender. It'll, it'll, okay. it'll get in touch with us this week. With approval? Or? Mr. Pender will be back in touch with you. We, there's, we can talk about it after the meeting, if you'd like to stay. Sure. Okay, the next person signed up, uh, I don't know if it's one or two, uh, Skyler Steinbeck, like I'm butchered that probably. Skyler, oh yeah, okay, yes. I'm sorry. Skyler Pedraza and Ms. Steinbeck. Gotcha. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, good evening, members of the board. Dr. Face, King. please, for the record, state your names and where you live. Um, Skylar Pedraza, 8066 Easton Village Drive. Um, Erica Steinbrook, 606 Prospect Bay Drive East. Stevensville? Uh, Graysonville. Oh, Easton. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, good evening, members of the board, Dr. Kane and President Harper. Tonight we are here to discuss the topic of graduation and propose a solution to all the buzz around the topic, which I know you all have been contacted with. As you know, my name is Skylar Pedraza. Along with being Kent Island High School student member of the Board of Education, I'm the class of 2020 student government president, a member of National Honor Society, National Science Honor Society, student government executive board and a character accounts coach in QACPS. Next to me is Erica Steinbrook who will be presenting the majority of our information. Good evening, I'm Erica Steinbrook and I'm the president of National Honor Society, the treasurer of the class of 2020 Student Government Association, the treasurer of the Student Government Association executive board, treasurer of the National English Honor Society and a member of Spanish Honor Society. First and foremost, I want to thank you for being willing to listen to student leaders from Ken Island as I strongly believe that it is of utmost importance for today's youth to learn how to advocate for themselves in an educated and respectful manner prior to advancing to their post-secondary plans. This sentiment is proudly mirrored in the Queen Anne's County Public Schools core values, visionary leadership, and focus on results and creating value. We are not at all oblivious to how much work each and every school official puts into preserving and promoting the best interests of all QACPS students, and for that we are extremely appreciative. In regards to our proposal, the issue as quoted from the letter sent out to families and students states, the approximate cost to properly protect the turf fields for graduation event is over $40,000 annually. From a fiscal standpoint, the cost is out of reach. In regards to our solution, I'll start with a quote from Field Turf, one of the largest suppliers and installers of turf in the United States. Regardless of whether you cover the seating area of the field, it is imperative to cover the area under the staging with protection such as professional landscaping mat or four by eight foot sheets of three inch, quarter inch, three quarter inch thick wood sheathing or OSB oriented strand board that can be doubled or tripled as required. A tarp or plastic covering should be placed underneath the OSB or thick wood sheathing if you go this way to avoid splinters migrating into the turf. Amazingly, County Commissioner Mr. Phil Duminell confirmed this past week to me that all of the County Commissioners have verbally agreed to cover the cost of protecting the field from the stage with a professional landscaping mat for both Ken Island High School and Queen Anne's High School should they express interest with student leaders or their own um, school official leadership into exploring the same avenue. Um, in addition, just to be prepared for every circumstance, we also received a quote from Construction Services and Supply Incorporated on Ken Island, and their company is willing and able to do this with wood sheathing or OSB for uh, $5,800 for 10,000 square feet per high school, as well as for Queen Anne's. Um, in regards to seating, 
Uh, post chairs can be used without a field covering as long as they are equipped with rubber stoppers. Most of the chairs that are used um, at Ken Island High School for graduation each year are already equipped with these stoppers on the bottom of them, um, but should we need to um, supplement that with more of them? Um, I have already met with uh, Class of 2020 advisor Mrs. Capadia and we agreed that putting our leftover funds from prom for the Class of 2020 towards this cause would be the best use of our money because we did um, raise a lot um, over the past four years and we have substantial funds that would be able to cover those expenses and any other um, extra maintenance costs um, that go along with having an outdoor graduation. Um, and furthermore, these stoppers are reusable for all future graduations, which will spread the small cost over several years. Um, so for the big picture, the class of 20, 2020 proposes a solution um, that doesn't cost anything extra to um, the school board or um, Ken Island High School in general. Um, thousands of high schools and colleges all over the country hold their annual commencement ceremonies on their turf fields using a stage covered slash chairs with rubber stoppers model with no issues or destruction to the turf each year. Um, and it is important for the school board to support um, world-class education as well as sporting events. And given the well-researched opportunity to avoid any issues surrounding holding graduation outdoors in Shipple Stadium, it is imperative to take action in favor of the students and families of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, as I'm sure you all have seen the, um, uh, the petition that has gotten almost 2,000 signatures um, going around on Facebook. Um, in conclusion, as students, we have the utmost respect for the Board of Education and all other QACPS school officials and um, your decisions and our greatest hope is that the decision made will be in favor of our resolution in, out in an outdoor graduation held in the best interest of all students and their families. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. ladies. Would you send that letter to each of us? Definitely. Please? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hear. Let us there's no, there's that on the Does anyone else like to speak? Okay. <laughs> I'd just like to make a statement. Uh, first of all, well done, ladies. Well done. Uh, you've done your homework and you presented in a very, very professional manner and thoroughly and with utmost respect, just like you said. Well done. Thank you. Thank we're you. very proud of you. Uh, what we're going to do, and I had some information that I was going to share with you uh, that I'm not even going to go through at this point, uh, because what I wanted to share had more to do with us ensuring that we're working together in this. It's not a us against them. And I know some people get, you know, uh, it raises emotions because it can be an emotional issue. And we completely understand that. Um, but you know that. And so I don't think that I need to say that. We certainly have looked at many other venues. There were issues with distance and cost and, and all of those kinds of things. So I'm not going to go through that. But you just shared some information that we did not have uh, because we had not spoken with a county commissioner that was willing to offer up dollars to fund this. And so if that is now the case, we are certainly going to follow up with that. And you know that we will be back in touch with you uh, as quickly as possible. So once again, thank you know that we're in it with you. We want to see you happy. We want to see that this event is all that it absolutely can be for you. Just keep in mind, if it rains, don't be sad because <laughs> we're still going to be inside. But we will certainly follow up on the information that was shared tonight. Despite what everybody says, I don't control the weather. Okay. <laughs> I know everybody thinks I do, but I don't. Mr. Pender Thank you does. Very much. <laughs> and and yeah, I also we try to make Mr. Pender. Right, Mr. Pender controls that. Uh, him and his twelve spotters. Uh, but what I would also like to do is thank our administrators because we do have uh, Mr. Schreckengost here and Ms. Hudock here uh, to support our students and to just to let everybody know um, that we're all in this together. So we just appreciate our administrators being here tonight as well. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Our next uh, item here is the budget presentation. Dr. Kane. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
Yeah, no, get out no, while you can. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> you, you can watch it online. And yes, I'm starting this off with some thumbs. Okay. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so for the record, good evening. I'm Andrea Kane, school superintendent. Uh, with me, my right hand, our CFO, Mr. John Fister, and I'm here to present the FY21 operating and capital budget request. And uh, just to start off, of course, our purpose is to uh, just do a little, thank you, sir. Our purpose is to ensure that you have an overview um, of things that are occurring in our school district. We're going to review the budget development process. We're going to review key components of the uh, revenue and expenditures for our school system. And then, of course, I am going to present our budget requests for FY21. So with that being said, we are Queen Anne's County Public Schools and I have some accomplishments and data points that I'd like to share with you. Some of the points that I mentioned may sound familiar and some may be new information for you or our listening audience. We have some things to celebrate and some areas which require uh, a little more attention and growth. In the case of the latter, we're working to create improvement plans for um, any of the areas that may be uh, lagging behind, we are always focused on uh, high yield strategies to garner those positive results that benefit all of our students. And as I present the FY21 budget request, you'll notice a consistent message and that once again this year is focused on our compelling why and that is our students. The most important factor in the success of our students, of course, is having a highly qualified teacher, trained professional um, in every single classroom, every single day, offering competitive salaries in a highly engaged and supportive community as we have um, is critical to that. Our starting teacher salaries are, as you see on the screen in front of you, starting just over 48,000, and those with master's degree uh, start slightly um, higher than that. And there are, as you can see, some other demographic data uh, for our county. We have about 50,000 residents, over 372 square miles. Our median income is about 92,000. And just a data point that I want to be sure that we um, highlight here, about 86.2% of our households um, have broadband internet access. Now, how that runs is, of course, another situation. But 86.2% of families have broadband internet. Um, of course, uh, we are the sixth wealthiest um, sixth greatest overall wealth per pupil, let me put it that way, and our second largest year-over-year -year increase in wealth per pupil for 2020. Dr. King, just one thing, so and I'm just for the audience, everybody's clear on this. When we say our starting salaries, that's the, the pay scale. Correct. Benefits is another substantial is, is number. In addition to that. So when we when somebody does some math to us, when they sit there and say add a teacher, it's just not that number. It's, it's not just number. right. It's not just for if it were a starting um, teacher or beginning teacher, it's forty-eight thousand plus another twenty to twenty-five thousand for benefits. Right. So frequently, when we talk about average teacher salaries, you'll see us use the uh, figure of about seventy-two thousand dollars, and that covers both the salary and the benefits. I appreciate you bringing that, making that point, uh, Mr. Smith, because some teachers will call because they do each year and say, well, wait a minute, I don't make 72000 What's that number that you're using? So that includes salary and benefits. Or our, or our funding source do not buy by 48000 if that's a teacher. Correct. Thank you. So there are some great things that are happening in Queen Anne's County. First and foremost, you already heard tonight about Bayside Elementary and their blue ribbon um, recognition, one of only six schools in Maryland uh, with that outstanding honor. Uh, Gary, Dov Governor Larry Hogan and our state superintendent, Dr. Karen Salmon, announced this recognition on December 10th, and we have been celebrating ever since. So we are so very proud of everyone at Bayside. 
side. And you'll also see the Maryland report card. As you know, the Maryland report card was released um, last December for the first time. Queen Anne's County earned high marks as evidenced by our star ratings. As you can see, schools can earn between one and five stars and nearly all schools earned four or five stars. We have one school that earned three stars, but I do want to make a note that that school experienced such significant growth. They were within, I believe, about less than 0.2% of earning that fourth star. But the State Department does not round, so it is a, a three-star school for now, not for long. For the fourth year in a row, Queen Anne's County is leading the state with the highest graduation rate, so we are currently at 95%. Absolutely, yeah. All schools, all schools are uh, engaged in efforts, as you know, centered on equity. And I'll share some information about our three most significant efforts. First, of course, our work with equal, equal Opportunity Schools. And I just returned on yesterday evening from the Equal Opportunity Schools uh, Summit and gained a lot of valuable information that is going to be significant to us that I'm happy to share with our, our staffs and particularly at our high schools where that is happening. And of course, that program is a program that ensures that we are um, looking at our data to ensure that we are offering opportunities for students who are not traditionally enrolled in AP courses. So we're talking about black, brown, and poor children, um, making sure that they are in those classes, they are able to meet with success and offering the supports that they need so that they may. Another initiative involves, involves our district's professional development um, that centered on um, cultural competency or cultural proficiency, if you will. The Cambio Group leads that professional development for um, central office staff and for our schools. And that's about creating more equitable learning outcomes by ensuring that teachers, um, that our teaching and learning process is actually focused on combining equitable practices with continuous improvement for students and staff. Thirdly, our, um, our staff is implementing the data-wise improvement process, which is an eight-step process for improving our data, student performance. Uh, it uses a wide range of data sources to improve instruction. It supports a culture of collaborative data inquiry um, based on evidence uh, where we identify and resolve learner-centered problems and problem of practice so that our students um, improve their uh, achievement. Dr. Kane. Yes, ma'am. Just a quick clarification for the public under the Equal Opportunity Schools. It's not only dedicated the ability for students who don't ordinarily aren't ordinarily able to take or don't ordinarily take AP classes. They don't necessarily have to be minorities to do that. Um, it's basically open to any student that wouldn't ordinarily be picked. Absolutely. Okay. But it's it's a focus to ensure that we are not we don't say if you're not black or if you're not brown or if you're not poor that you can't go to AP classes. But quite frequently, frequently research tells us that those groups of students are often overlooked. Either they don't know that the opportunity avails itself for them to be a part of advanced level courses. Maybe no one has shared that with them. So everybody, including black, brown, and poor children. Agreed. And I think important too, any student um, that is it, we have been asking any student to do that, not just any student that isn't, wouldn't think they would be able to do an AP class. We have made offers to whoever they are to be able to, to give it a shot. And that's kind of what I want to emphasize. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank, thank you. You're quite welcome. So let's talk a little bit about the budget development process. In an effort to ensure alignment of our budget with our district goals and priorities, we should first talk about our five-year strategic plan efforts. Um, over the next few years through 2021, Queen Anne's County Public Schools has set a priority that students will meet or exceed standards and graduate on time, college, career, and civic ready to be globally competitive. Uh, in addition to that, achievement disparities among all groups of students are to be eliminated. 
Our budget discussions and planning begins at the central office level, as you know, between July and September. We're meeting with administrators. Uh, next, we focus on gathering budget requests from schools and central office departments to garner feedback. Um, and then we get our survey out to the public. We look at budget priorities um, by way of our budget survey. This year, unfortunately, we only had 125 responses. Last year, we were upwards of about 400. Um, the year before, we had about uh, two or 300. So this year we only had 125 responses and that's after we left that survey open for three months. So um, we're going to encourage and we'll continue as we enter the next budget year, FY22, that um, our, our public really participates in that because we do need to hear from our public. That can have anything to do with the curve. And we, there's so much news with the curve and what's happening and you know people think the state's going to be the you know, they're, they're putting all these big numbers out, which I'm beyond how they're going to fund it, and they are too at the present time, it looks like. But, you know, the people think, oh, it's going good. There's, they say billions of dollars here, billions of there, but I just, people, there's, it, there might have a false security that those billions might not be there. Well, you know, Mr. Smith, one thing that we always do before we talk about uh, Kerwin is we say anything that is talked about for FY22 and beyond is proposed because legislation is not set as you just mentioned we don't know what will get funded or what the funding sources will be and it very well could have had an impact on that survey I'm not sure but we really are going to try to encourage big greater drop, participation maybe. a yeah. big drop but then there's a you know I don't know what it was back in the day when Thornton was the savior you know and it mm -hmm. didn't pan out and mm -hmm. now all of a sudden we've got this commission that's going to be a savior no. Okay, Be thank you. Interesting development. Yeah. So as we continue, we are between December and February, we work with our school board to narrow and prioritize our budget requests. And in March, of course, we are to my budget presentation. And, um, and then we will present to county commissioners uh, later this month. As we continue through that budget process, um, you know, it's important to, to note that um, in crafting the budget, the public should know that I am required by law to prepare and to present this annual budget. So we've noted that in this slide. And um, we seek in every way to secure adequate fr funds for, you know, from our local authorities so that we are able to support our students and our schools and our employees. <clears throat> yes, sir, Mr. Anderson. We saw outstanding performance. Uh, that has happened here in this county. And we're going to look at a budget which proposes a great deal of spending. I sat on this board, uh, the commissioner, and the question is going to be, well, if you, things are going so well, why do you need all this extra money? Well, I would answer to keep it the way it's going and make it better. But then they're going to pick apart uh, this dollar versus that dollar and so forth. Uh, we have to have some really good answers, and I'm sure you will. Yes, and we are accustomed to that, and they're doing their job to ensure that the monies that they are, you know, issuing, allocating are used adequately. So we completely understand that. Yes. Um, the next slide shows uh, or it summarizes our budget survey and again we only had 125 um, uh, respondents 125 parents employees and community members as well as business partners responded and uh, over 38.4 percent of those respondents believed that adequate county funding is the greatest challenge facing our school system In addition to our public, our school board members established priorities for the uh, FY21 budget. And what you said, you identified student safety and adequate classroom support as your top two uh, priorities, followed by teacher class size ratio, um, compensation for all employees. So all of those issues are on the screen. Now, 
for the next few slides, and, and we apologize, when, we, when this gets put in PDF, the numbers get moved all around, um, and we'll make sure that we post a different version or, or, or that. hand that out to you so that you can see where the numbers fall, but I can share that with you. Um, but for the next few slides, I'm gonna talk about revenues, um, and as you can see, most of our funding um, comes from our county and our state resources. Any federal monies that we receive is restricted for certain certain purposes such as Title I, um, special education, uh, but I can I can share with you. Of course, you can see the 35% unrestricted um, from the state, and you can see the 58% um, from from the county. But we'll make sure that we give you um, that. the The other largest portion from the ones that you can't see that look jumbled is a 4.8% federal restricted. That we have a 1.5% state restricted. We have a 0.9%, which is other sources restricted, and um, a 0.4 percent which is other unrestricted. We have a 0.2 percent fund balance. Okay. I'm going to dig a, just a little bit deeper. Um, what I think is important that we note is that almost 86 percent of each dollar budgeted goes towards salaries and benefits. Um, that leaves under 15 percent uh, to do other things with and um, much of that is, is restricted. The next slide, you've seen a slide like this before in other budget presentations, and it shows our wealth per pupil. Queen Anne's County is the sixth wealthiest county in our state, and our wealth per pupil continues to increase. However, we do fall among the lowest in the state in per pupil spending. This next slide is um, sharing with you some information about our fund balance, uh, what we hold in fund balance as of the end of fiscal years 20, 2015 through 2019. There are two lines that make up our fund balance, the assigned and the unassigned. The assigned fund balance are funds we have to hold in reserve to cover costs such as annual leave accrued but not yet paid, encumbrances, that's for purchase orders outstanding at the end of the year and future insurance costs. The unassigned fund balance represents the funds that we have to cover any unexpected costs or budget overruns. Now as you can see from this table, our overall fund balance averages around 3% but our unassigned fund balance is around 1% of our total budget. The Government, fin Government Finance Officers Association, that's GFOA, you may have heard about that, uh, best practices recommends two months of operating expenses as a reserve. Even taking salaries out of the equation, based on GFOA recommendations, our unassigned fund balance should be approximately 2.5 million. We have less than half of their recommendation. We'll go on to talk about uh, maintenance of effort. And of course, maintenance of effort is a funding level imposed on counties by state law. The law requires county governments to provide as much funding as they did in the prior year on a per pupil basis. For several years within the last decade, Queen Anne's County Public Schools was funded at the minimum level required by maintenance of effort law. With the exception of last year, we, we were more than maintenance of effort. For FY21 calculations, Queen Anne's County had the second highest increase in wealth per pupil at 5.8% in the state, and that was followed uh, just by Calvert County. More on maintenance of effort. Education effort, which I will say again, is a maintenance of effort, is determined by evaluating three factors. The lesser of A, the county's increase in local wealth per pupil, B, the statewide average increase in local wealth per pupil, or C, a flat rate of 2.5%. It was determined that because our local wealth per pupil growth was 5.8% and the statewide growth was 
The state imposed the minimum per law of 2.5% to the per pupil allocation. You've heard me say before, and I state again, that, maintenance, that education effort is maintenance of effort. It is not an additional amount over maintenance of effort. There is no other interpretation. So in 2020, our per pupil allocation was about 7,900 per student. And for 2021, it'll be just over 8,100 per student. We'll talk about revenues. Our FY21 budget request is 5.66 million or 5.4% 5 5 more funding than last year's FY2020. As you can see, we're expected to receive just over 800,000 from the state, exclusive of any funding that may come our way because of additional blueprint, blueprint or Kerwin legislation. This budget also requests 5.1 million more in county funds, which is nearly 3.5 million more than maintenance of effort. <coughs> Board sources of 440,000 um, 440, comprised mainly from use of building fees um, that we collect interest income on and out of county tuitions. Would you say that again? I'm sorry. So I'm explaining to you the board sources up there because I had to make sure that that's not something that everybody just knows what that is, so I'm just spelling out for you that that's about building fees that we collect, okay, okay out of state tuition and interest on income. It's the only revenue we can generate ourselves. Question. Mm -hmm. The uh, 59 and a half million under the 2020 budget, is that inclusive of the MOE? Yes, that's, every, that's everything. So that's everything, but it doesn't. And so the requested increase is uh, five million over that, or is that? I'm trying to correct say. five point one mm -hmm, over, and it would be sixty four point five for FY twenty one. It's five over. You said it three point five million over, over MOE, mm -hmm. which includes but in, the but education. But in total, it's over about current. five point one is going to be our request. Over, over, over current oh. county funding levels for FY twenty. Okay. okay. And the other little number in there is where we balanced our budget last year with with fund balance, yes, and we did not include an amount for fund balance in this request. Mm -hmm. Trying to get away from that practice. Oh yeah, yeah. I because mean, it's already too low bad policy to do a recurrent cost with a fund balance. Do we, <clears throat> do we have any idea what back charge we're going to get above for uh, the pension cost, uh, the actual evaluation? I remember one year uh, it was a fairly significant and nasty surprise. Do they give us any warning? Uh, from the state that I think that's when the state changed their formula and how it was going to be funded and push it to the state. I think the same thing as they did with you guys with this roads. You know, they just changed their formula who's going to fund it. And that that's a, was a one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does the medical uh, plan, health insurance plan, cover both retirees and active participants? Yes. yes. So therefore, utilization. Uh, of older people retired uh, rolls back into uh, the shared cost by the employees. Yes, sir. Shouldn't we be accumulating a fund uh, when there happens chance that we get a nasty surprise and a rate increase? We, we, we do maintain a what we would use a rate stabilization fund by being part of the ESMEC Health Alliance. We have used that in the past and probably anticipate using that in this upcoming year to help balance our done. rate increase. I think that ought to be done. And it, 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 it has been done in the past and we share that same responsibility with the county so we would have to do it jointly because we are both under the same plan. Same problem. Correct. Mm -hmm. We have the same, same plan. Number, six, seven percent every year. Yes. Okay. 
All right. And so this slide, you know, simply shows us that we uh, make those budget decisions as um, and align them with our strategic plan. So if it's not falling within the strategic plan, we're looking closely at whether or not we ought to be making that request. And we do have something that uh, falls into that, as you well know, with the health, health uh, supervisor, that coordinator position. All right, and so for the first um, strategic plan goal of learning, accountability, and results, the following requests are, uh, and, and I'll tell you that the next eight slides contain our budget requests, right, as they align to that strategic plan, those district goals. To the far left, you see how we prioritize the requests. M represents a mandatory expense. CB represents the cost of doing business. PC represents program continuation, and PE represents a program enhancement or a new initiative. Okay. Strategic plan goal one is learning accountability and results. And as you can see, we're asking for uh, two positions from Title I because they will no longer be funded with Title, I'm sorry, Title II dollars. And that's at 144,000. Materials of instruction for science, this is a mandatory cost of 36,000. Uh, curriculum and instruction for core instructional programs at 196,000. 504 plan software at 25, just over 25,000. Midshore Special Education Consortium, which we have spoken about several times at 130,000. And the non-public placements at 255,000. Continued with that first um, learning goal, learning accountability and results, we are asking for uh, special education training as Comar is required by law, um, and that is at $7,000. Coordinator for health services, which we just mentioned, one position to supervise our school nurses, uh, picked up from the County Department of Health at $100,000. School-based staffing for teachers, 3.48 positions um, at 250,500, just about, or 600. School-based staffing for paraprofessionals, one position at 24,000. And then we're looking at curriculum writing, uh, stipends and leadership development uh, for just over 85,000. We continue along with learning accountability and results. Curriculum instruction substitutes for mentors at 20, just over 24,000. Board certified behavior analyst, that's a contracted position, at 60,000. Our virtual learning academy licenses at 158,000, just over. And primary talent development, that's for gifted and talented at 10,000. All total for goal one, learning accountability and results, we're looking at just over 1.5 million. Safety and security is our second strategic plan goal. Um, there are no requests for safety and security. We're continuing um, additional security enhancements for our school, uh, for students and staff in our buildings through capital projects and grant opportunities. So we have no requests for the operating budget. But, but that's significant with what grants Mr. Pender's gotten through the federal and state and some of our things. So it's when it sees blank here, that's a... It's, I mean, we it's, aren't it's not in this budget. Right, it's we a, aren't. It's a substantial number that we're adding and making sure that a lot of our things are being. Our, our work is being done, our plan is being followed, and we are thankful that we're able to get what we need to have done through grants rather than but just it's operating. Done. Absolutely. Well, the Sheriff's Office and budget is picking up a lot of the security costs, I would think. No. Well, who, who's paying for the officers in the school? Oh, well, they don't belong to us. They are the, the law enforcement, plan. right. So, that, yeah, that's not part of our budget. And the third plan, um, strategic plan goal is operational effectiveness, and this is going to carry on um, for the next two slides. Um, it includes transportation bus contracts at 163,350, transportation for operations of those buses, 91,000. Transportation, that's drivers, overtime for special education, homeless students. One position we're requesting at almost 84,000, that's 83,978. Uh, the Ken Island activity bus for 27,000. Operational increases for 61,000. 
operational increases um, maintenance of plant, this is different, uh, for 68,000. The carpenter locksmith, we're looking for one position uh, for 53,000, almost 400. Technology for software and licenses, those increases amount to 10,600. An accountant for to assist with the fiscal reporting um, that we have in general, but it's going to be critically important as we embark on this um, blueprint for Maryland's future. The requirements for reporting is, are significant. That's one position at 85,600, just about. Athletics and the athletic director uh, pilot, pilot, because currently at one of our schools, the athletic director is um, a teacher. At another school, the athletic director is an administrator um, without the requirement of having to teach, but that teaching piece is uh, creating quite a situation for us. A lot of districts across the state, as you know, we've discussed, have moved to uh, non-teaching athletic directors. So we're requesting $42,000 to assist with that reorganization. Um, the total for operational effectiveness, $685,934. Uh, Strategic plan goal four is human capital. Um, what we are requesting is $2.5 million for compensation, um, and most of those um, uh, units already are in the second year. Uh, will be in the second year of their of their negotiated agreements and um, hopefully we'll be bringing the last one to you for um, signing in April and 2.5 million health insurance 662 almost 663,000 teacher and employee retirements at 60,000 employee life insurance at 47,000 compensation to address minimum wage requirements of $100,000 student services that's materials and mileage um, for $500 and that total increase or, or request is $3,367,934 that's the girl in the room that's the big number. That's the big number. That's the big number that has the compensation. We've negotiated for two years, and we're on the final year of that. Correct. But if we, we will in for FY21. Right. Mm -hmm. Just the first piece, the compensation piece. Yeah, but I mean that's when you, you know that's the and compensation, health insurance. I mean it's a it adds up. And we are still going to be assessing those costs, the insurance costs, as I understand it. You and Mr. Pender both were looking at. The health insurance it has it hasn't come. Yeah, it's yet. All, all insurances. The health insurance definitely we're going to be monitoring. You know, along with the county on the health lines, and then we do have some increases as you saw represented here for even just our bus transportation and our regular liability and those kind of insurances continue to increase. So when we have to do this, when we have to approve this budget in June, we'll know better our costs. Absolutely, because we'll have okay. more historical data. I just data. want to make sure everybody's yes. aware of that that the we're assessing for the cost. The health insurance is that the roll up. Cost based on the increase in salary, the 2.5 million, and there was a 600,000 uh, so, benefit cost or health insurance or pension. Yeah, uh, is that something that is actually an increase in the premium, or is some of this a roll up? Please. So we are self-insured. So what this represents is from our actuary that works with the Health Alliance doing projections as to where our renewal rates, even though it's not a premium, it, we, we pay actual claims, is projected to be at $662,000. So when we put a position in this budget, we estimate a standard benefit range. So it's not included in this number. This is basically the, just the increase in the board's share for insurance going forward. I, I'm kind of queasy uh, about being short cash if we get a surprise on health utilization and pre premium increase. But we, we've got additional coverage, you know, stop loss gap insurance and all that kind of stuff that helps protect us from those big Thank you. swings. Need yes, to sir. Know that. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to uh, goal five, community partnerships and engagement. 
Uh, we originally requested a similar position as shown here early in this year's budget uh, process, but um, administration decided to focus the limited budget dollars elsewhere. In recent conversations, as you may know, uh, with commissioners, uh, we were asked to add this workforce coordinator position to our FY 2021 uh, budget request. The dollar amount requested is a placeholder until a job description and a salary scale uh, can be finalized. But this is the placeholder for this at the moment? Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This was a specific request from the commissioner. That is correct. It wasn't originally in our budget. This is to do what? This is to help with the youth apprenticeship um, programming and to increase our student enrollment, be out on the jobs, looking for partners. I knew the answer. I just wanted to make sure that it got out. Absolutely. We also, we have we lost a uh, work-based learning coordinator, or have ha we're having someone who's duly handling along with his Correct. other duties, and this would certainly help with that. I mean, that's how many students do you think are in the work-based learning? Oh wow, work-based learning. We've got I don't hundreds. Uh, yeah. Oh no. But for but for youth you apprenticeship, have it's taking on this oh, yeah. on top oh, yeah. of other duties. So this person You're would also about the youth apprenticeship. Oh, program. you said work-based learning. Yeah. We mm -hmm. do for work-based learning have a hundred. I don't know students, uh, probably more. But for the youth apprenticeship program, which okay. is slightly different because those oh. students get paid. There's an application process. I misunderstood. The, mm -hmm. I thought this person would also help with the work-based learning. Well, they will. They will, but they're going to be they're going to focus on youth apprenticeship. So all of that, as you said, is on a supervisor, a curriculum supervisor, who also supervises history. Um, so that is a significant amount of work. And because our our community is really um, intent on ensuring that we increase the number of students that are helping to support our businesses, it's important that this position is there. And so we put it there because it was a request from our commissioners. That's why I clarified that because I figured what she was thinking of was the apprentice Good program. Catch. And that's only seven, eight? We have, we have six students right six, now. Six, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And working to increase that. Okay. So the next slide. And for some, there we go. Thank you. These were <laughs> these were requests in our um, our original budget um, process, and you know some tough decisions had to be made. And uh, what we looked for is a balance between need and a reasonable request. Some of those requests included um, the additional um, positions for schools. There were 12 additional positions at 785, almost 800,000. Um, there were um, materials and technology, almost 52,000. There was the supervisor for social studies and media, trying to separate that out from the youth apprenticeship and, and work-based learning um, work at 100,000. Curriculum and instruction for materials and software and stipends at 110,000. Uh, additional maintenance staff, one at 75,500. And technology needs at 15. Thousand. That was over $1 million hard decisions, but we uh, made some uh, reductions and we reduced the request by over a million dollars, $1.1 million. So the slide that you're looking at right now, the summary, um, is a summary of the new requests that we're making for FY21. Nearly 86.1% of this request directly impacts the classroom with 7.48 positions, compensation increases, and a modest increase in curriculum needs uh, also needed to support classrooms. So we've got 11.48 positions at 5.6, almost 5.7 million. This budget request of $109 million would be funded primarily by the county government. Of course, you know 59.2% comes from the county and the state 34%. And again, we'll make sure that you get a better copy so that you can see where the numbers align to. You're calling this revenue. Is it, what, do you, what do you mean by calling that revenue? Operating, operating dollars. This is where we would receive our money to support the budget that Dr. Kane just proposed. From the county the, the, the and the percentage state. breakout, where the majority would be county and state funded. 
okay. so this is the money we would be getting in so, to support so, the so you expenditures. We're used you just to hearing saw. it called funding. Yeah. So you saw a slide on this earlier, and it pretty much showed you a similar state revenue and county revenue. So we just followed the same logic. Yeah, but logic. this is revenue from. It's funding. It's funding. It's, it's just funding. Where it's not, it would come We aren't getting from. this from anybody else. We're asking for this. 109 million is going to be our The state request. is what they've told us they're going to fund us, and then right. the, the delta or the plug comes from the county. Correct. Okay. I can, revenue, we're confused. Well, revenue meaning we're generating revenue by building fees and interest. Funding is that we're, we're collecting it from. It's just a. Okay. I just want to clarify that. Where not. the dollars come from. from, from it, yes. Yeah. Yes. Where the dollars come from. For the FY21 proposed budget, 85.2% our salaries and benefits of each dollar budgeted, right, goes toward those salaries and benefits. There may be some very similar um, as to how the, each dollar is spent, but currently it does point to the fact on a percentage basis that more money funnels to salaries and uncontrollable expenses such as, um, you know, non-public placements, um, and less to other items which are crucial to keeping a school system running. This is a minute question. Mm -hmm. but we're at 84 point, I'm sorry, 85.2 on this graph. Back on page nine when you gave it to us, it was 86 point. 85. Why is the difference? Yeah. So, so, may I? Yeah. Okay. So the difference is the two years. That it, the the first one is where we are currently in the FY20 budget and how it breaks out. This is when we throw in a lot of the costs that we just talked about that are non-salary that typically are the first to go during a reconciliation process. You'll see that number increase along with where we are, but it's two different fiscal years basically. Yeah. When it says salary benefits, I just look at the same thing. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 it's salary. If we were fully funded for this request before you and the commissioners funded it, we, you're right. It would drop from 86 down to 85.2. Likelihood of that is, you know, we'll have those discussions, but that was the reason for the difference. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the um, capital budget. You've already seen our capital budget requests. So for the sake of time, I'm not gonna review um, each single item in grand detail. Um, our capital requests total nearly 12 million or just over $12 million, and they include projects for windows, doors, chillers, <coughs> fire alarms, um, and partial roof replacement, plus the central office planning and design funding. And that, not, the commissioners seem to be hot on that one. Absolutely. I mean, not that right. We, we they asked us. They they asked us. Correct. To do that project. Correct. Not, okay. To do which project? I'm sorry. The central office. Central oh. office. Oh yeah. Feasibility study yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, great. I'm sorry. Like and then planning dollars. and design stage once we have a you know. So, so our situation. request is really ten million. Yeah. Okay. No, our request is that, but yeah, and not that we can't agree with some of this stuff, but right. it didn't initiate this board. So the next several slides continue on with our request for building services, uh, windows, gutters, downspouts, uh, painting, tiles, sidewalks, asphalt, um, substructure repairs, and we carry on with technology replacements, custodial equipment, uh, vehicle replacement, food service equipment replacement, furniture replacements for cafeterias and classrooms. And then, of course, uh, buses and, and did I skip one? Uh, yeah, for yeah, there you go. go back. Yep. There we go. There we go. I caught two. No problem. Uh, maintenance equipment replacements. There are a variety of, of projects that need to be completed in schools. Uh, intercom replacements, which we can no longer get replacement parts for. Um, so we have to do something on that. Phone system replacements, playground equipment, upgrades and repairs to portables and security upgrades. Just to remind me what the athletics 272,000 was. Um, I can't, I just- That was uh, refurbishing Ken Allen High School's track. Okay. Um, and then also a, a building to house equipment in. B building what? A building to house equipment in. At, at Queen Anne. At Queen Anne's Hospital. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pender. 
And then we go on for the buses and cameras and year three of our five-year technology plan and of course textbooks. Our, uh, we'll get two point, almost 2.5 from the state and request of over, just over 12 million uh, for county funding. If, if I could add, if you noticed on these last couple slides, the key word there was either an upgrade or a replacement. It's not new stuff. It's upgrading or replacing, you know, furniture that's 40, 50, if not older, years old. A question, we had, uh, we had two line items in the, in the budget about equipment, um, furniture for like this uh, central office. Three thousand dollars. Why? Yeah, it was like three thousand or five thousand. Another place. Why isn't that in capital? Honestly, neither should be in capital when we're dealing with it. That to me is an operating expense. However, historically, this county's funded those kind of requests over in the capital budget. Which here we're dealing with the classroom and that side. What you saw and we discussed before was in case the occasional office chair or something like that breaks. But the focus here on the capital budget is more in the That's what I'm asking. If it's an office chair, why don't we have it in capital rather than the operating It budget? shouldn't be in capital. Those, those things are, to me, are operating expenses. It, it has a very, it, it, once you're not going to repair it. Okay. So there's a criteria the state puts in. What's the useful life? What is so the cost? So there's no, okay. And should it be re replaced or repaired? And when you get into that, we do repair some of our desks and chairs and things like that. So there's a gray area. But generally, if it's disposable, it should be over in the operating budget, and we should just be budgeting for it and expensing it Just trying it to help our MOE out. Sorry. Anything we could do for that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would it be helpful when you see something like a large expense for uh, a roof partial replacement to know, because I know the questions will come, what's wrong with the roof now? When was the roof installed? What were the guarantees uh, for the installer? And all that uh, detail uh, to support. We can't have a roof that leaks. Right. Yeah, so we do. We, we're required to share that information, the life of the roof, when it was last replaced, and whatever other things have to be done. So we do. The county commissioners are all aware of our requests for those types of facilities upgrades, and, and they have that information. I've seen numerous requests that have always been approved for chillers, uh, what does a chiller do? Is it an air conditioning? So I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Fis uh, Pender um, because it, that's his area of expertise. Of yeah, a chiller game. is what produces the cold water that, uh, in turn, produces the air conditioning. So without the chiller being operating, uh, operating, we don't have any air conditioning in our so schools. The, the replacement chillers are for chillers that don't operate. Their life expectancy is about at end. Um, like we replaced Graysonville Elementary Schools, Churchill Elementary Schools. <coughs> now we're looking to replace Sellersville. That's determined by measuring the temperature hours. of the water? Now we determine that by the hours of operation and then also our maintenance log on it and our repairs on it. So it's not according to how effective it currently is. It's uh, based on the length of time that it's been in operation. It, yes, and then the efficiency of it over years goes down. The chillers they're making now are much more efficient. And and you also did mention, Mr. Pender, the that's maintenance the log on that. So that indi that's an indication of its efficiency. Okay. So we are requesting full funding for this budget. Um, Always, uh, I'm going to share, you know, some, some things that we have to consider if we should not get full funding. Um, of course, we are um, in jeopardy of not being able to fund our already agreed upon negotiated um, uh, agreements. And of course, they all do say related to funding, you know, approved based on available funding. So we do want to make sure that that's out there. But we certainly want to make sure that we uh, do everything that we can so that they are funded. Um, possible staff reductions, core instruction program resources may be stopped, staffing, recruitment, retention. Um, we certainly have our fair share, as we do across the state, of concerns with regard to um, sh teacher shortages. Minimum wage compliance, we have to follow the law in terms of uh, ensuring that we have met those requirements. No instructional program improvements, and, and you did not hear uh, about new 
programs. We are simply trying to, which is not the best practice, and I'm going to say a little bit more about that. Um, we've not asked for new programs this year. Uh, state and federal reporting and compliance concerns, should we not have full funding, and continued underfunding of key services, including special education and transportation, as you know, that they both have been um, spoken of highly this year, over the course of the year. Um, without full funding, I've said this for the last two years and I'm saying it again, we remain status quo. And we've taken the liberty of giving the definition, not to insult anybody, um, but it means, you know, the existing state. It can be mean, it can be interpreted in a negative way. If we are not improving, then we are remaining the same. And it is the belief of myself and my team that um, we ought to be moving forward. Our students are outstanding students and they deserve every single opportunity that we can possibly give them. Does that mean wider offerings? Absolutely. We always talk about offering other languages. That's the main um, you know, concern. We have French and we have Spanish in this district. Every district around us offers Italian and Chinese and many other languages, art um, options. We've been able to increase some of the offerings there with the help of some strong leaderships and some strong art teachers. Uh, but there's so much more that we can do. Across the board, whether we're talking about computer science or whether we're talking about history, we finally were able to add our African American history course this year. That's not, that, that comes with a cost. People have to work on that. Time is devoted. We have to pay people for their time. So if we want to stay status quo, we keep doing what we're doing and we watch our interest and our participation decline. If we want to attract, if we want to do all that we can for our students, then we do better than status quo. So for me, status quo is a negative term. Uh, so I'm going to get off of that. Okay. Um, some of the issues that we raised about last year's budget addressed a Band-Aid approach and again I have called it duct tape in some cases. Um, I'm pleased to say that the uh, virtual learning pilot is off now finally that we've gotten it underway to a good start. We're going to continue that. We're working to continue that and increase enrollment for next year and um, it is our distinct intention because we've already gotten approval now from MSDE to go ahead, start on time, and as long as we have our students enrolled by that September 30 deadline, we will realize in the following year the revenues from those students, from that student enrollment, which was our intent this year. But once again, I ask you to give consideration to the information that you've heard this evening um, and vote to approve this budget. I know that you have had questions along the way that we've been able to respond to. I'd like to ask if there are any other questions that you might have, please feel free, ask them, and we will be happy to respond. And then we're going to be looking for your vote. Thank you. On, um, I'm sorry, stop, start off. On slide 27, we have on here the curriculum writing stipends and leadership development. I noticed it's $500 less than our green sheet that we were working off of. So some of it has been summarized. So um, let me go back and look at that. No, no, no. I, I, I noticed it was $500 less, and I just wondered if there was I know any other decreases that could go on that as well um, in the curriculum writing stipend. I don't know. I don't know who does all that or if it could be condensed or are you talking are you, you referencing the, the 85203? Yes, the the 485 which I assume Slide 500 20, was taken off. No, you look at 27. Slide 27. Slide 27. Yeah. Learning accountability, right? So originally it was 85, five, uh, 85 703 and now it's just 85 203 so there was 500 taken off. My question was, is there any way to decrease the curriculum writing? Have you know, I mean, I don't know who does it over the summer. I don't know. You know, I'm just asking. If there was any way to any more decreases coming our way since we already had 500 less. Right. So we got it down as much as we could. Okay. Um, did you want to say anything else to that, Mr. Pilewski? I, I would just continue to like to advocate for the work that our curriculum supervisors do. Um, 
remember that back in 2016 when we had the curriculum management audit, we still continue to work on a whole host of courses that still need a viable curriculum. Um, our core areas certainly have that, but there's certainly areas, and I'd be happy to point those out in a... Um, yeah, just asking. I sure. Know. The, the supervisors are 12-month employees, though. They are. Okay, so this is other people additionally that are helping with the curriculum. Uh, uh, absolutely. Right. So okay. they'll they'll be going into Just that process very quickly. Absolutely, we involve sure all of our teachers. Um, well, not all of them, but we do. Uh, each one of them has a curriculum writing committee, depending on the course they're writing. You know, which certainly we believe that you've got to invite teachers to be fully part of that. Certainly, as a as a distributed leadership model as well. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate sure. It. Anyone else questions? Well, I, you know, uh, you know, the school system should really be congratulated because the budget that has been brought forth for year after year after year has not been optimum. Yet the results per, uh, that have been shown have steadily increased. Now they may be tapering off now, but the school system has done an awful lot in measurable improvement yet not been fully funded to the optimum. And I think uh, there's, there's a lot of hard work that went into that. Thank you for that, Mr. Anderson. We have teachers and we have support staff and administrators that are going well above and beyond and, and they deserve to hear that. So thank you for that. We recognize though that people's time is worth money and we cannot continue to squeeze that, um, you know, and, and we need to pay people for their time. So thank you for recognizing that. Mrs. Morissette, do you have any? I do. Mr. Smith? Yeah, I, I appreciate this thing because you summarize it in a very short period of time for the amount of time we spent going over a lot of these. We <laughs> tried to condense it, right. And one of the things I used to always say was, you know, some things are on thin ice yeah. and we want them, we'd like them, make it good, but there's gonna be things that are gonna have to, probably come off and in another month when we have some staff retiring and stuff there are other ways that we could probably save some income that will re go back in our budget so right now I you know it's a lot of money um, it's the way we have to approach it uh, but I think we're going to make some real hard decisions when we get reality on this and uh, at some point I think we're going to look in the future how to control some of our other costs because uh, we got things that just aren't sustainable, and I've said that before. And if this, if, this, if, if Kerwin even gets anywhere close to what they're predicting, you know, it, even if the state funds it, it's still coming out of our pocket. So at some point, we got to have a reality check of what we're doing. I think we're doing a good job. We have a good system. We want to support it, but um, no period. However, funding is is limited. It, it's limited, and and, and we got to we got to look at that. And I think there's ways that we can look at it, and hopefully we can come with our county a, a good good resolve on what we can do for it thank you but i commend everybody and our, and our staff i mean we we have good people here it's like every company or corporation and we have 90 percent plus that are 110 percent on board mm -hmm. and you know sometimes people don't think I'll, i appreciate it but i do appreciate it but also can't spend too much money but that's just me <laughs> captain Ke thank you mr smith captain kelly this this one item I wanted to mention is the um, accountant that we have in here, the 85000 and we cut off um, additional school-based positions. I know we discussed this. From the meetings I've gone to recently, um, legislative meetings on Kerwin, they have indicated that there is a, um, a plan, basically, to the, the all the reporting requirements and the data gathering and stuff that would be an accountant would be needed for, as you told us during the discussions, that those reporting requirements were going to be 2023 and they are moving them to 2024. So there's a there's a, a opportunity to drop the accountant because we don't need it immediately. Um, but and maybe we'll do that after the budget goes forward. But I just want to make you aware of that. Okay. You may not need that one. I mean, you obviously need one because you work like a dog, and so does your staff. But the justification that for that was the new reporting requirements for Kerwin, and that may not that may be slid back. And I mean, in fact, I've got some information recently that it is being slid back with the new legislation to 2024 as opposed to 2023. So I'm going to be looking at that one if okay. this legislation holds. Okay. So the reality is, 
uh, this evening, our action item is that we um, approve this budget, both the capital and the operating, to send over to the county commissioners. In due course, they have their hearings, they design their budget, they come back to us and tell us what they are going to give us. And the reality check will be in May, possibly June, whenever all this um, you know, unfolds. And that's when we really have to make some more hard decisions uh, based on the funding that we receive. And I'm, I'm just doing this for the GQ public who has never heard this before and um, letting them know that that's the time frame. But by July 1st, by law, we have to approve our budget in order to move forward. Yes, um, I, I was going to ask that this yellow sheet be changed, but I think, you know, in the interest, interest of saving paper, we'll just do it on one page, okay? <laughs> so, um, with any other, no other questions or comments? No, um, I, I don't know how to do this, if we should do it each individual, or or just go ahead and blanket it. Well, I'll make a motion, if you'd like. Okay, then please make a motion. I move that we approve the FY 2021 operating budget to go forward to the commissioners. For the amount of? In the amount of just the operating, whatever that amount was. You want the number? All right. We have it. Oh, Cam Kelly, amounts the amount's up on the screen. screen. The 109. For uh, 109,000. Million. I'm sorry, 109,8238. that correct way of saying that? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 109 million. She was 109 million. <laughs> 238,000, right now? 238. 208 dollars. 109 million, 8,238 dollars. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? I call for the vote, hearing none. I call for the vote on the motion to approve the superintendent's proposed operating budget for the FY 2021 school year in the amount of $109,008,238. All those it's in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Abstain. I have one abstention. Hearing no no's. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Next, do I have a motion to accept the superintendent's proposed capital budget in the amount of $12,272,100? So moved. I have, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the proposed capital budget in the amount of $12,272,100. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. One no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, board you. members. This is right on this page. Thank you. Um, it is 10 minutes to 8. Would it be permissible, Dr. Kane, if we go ahead and took a break? Awesome. See you all back about 8 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Strait. Mr. Strait? And we are back. Next on our um, agenda, current action items, the human resource report and substitute bus driver report. Anything else to add? No, no? Ms. Mr. Offer. Bender? Nothing else to add to the report? Great, thank you. Do I have a motion to accept the human resources su and substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the human resources and, and substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bass. Mr. Pender, appreciate your all your hard work. I really do. Uh, the, the entire board does. Next on our agenda are textbooks for a 30-day review, novels grades 6 through 12, and math 8 and algebra 1. Mr. Paluski. Yes, Madam President. I assume. <laughs> yes, Madam President. Superintendent requests that um, our novels through 6 through 12, this is an effort to continue the diversity of the literature that our students are reading. 
as well as uh, up for review would be Math 8 and Algebra 1. Uh, if there are specific questions, I do have both of our supervisors here that would be more than welcome to uh, answer any questions. Um, those, the novels as well as uh, the Math 8 and Algebra 1, uh, the materials are behind me. They'll be here in the boardroom for the public to review over the next 30 days if approved by the board this evening. Any board members have any questions they'd like to have asked? Yeah, one question on our report on, I'm on page three. It had people reviewing it, instruction services. Some of them after their name has rejected. What's that mean? Uh, page three. I'm on the pride. Second, Mr. Smith. We're under pride. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that wait. on the novels? Yeah, teachers. Yes. Uh, Rich McNeil rejected. Uh, Sarah Rosendale. Yeah. So, uh, Miss, well, Miss Passon comes forward, so, and she'll explain it, but we asked several people to read those novels and to give their opinion as to whether or not uh, the book was suitable, but we'll have Miss Passon to, and I'm so excited about this, uh, because our students asked for this. So go ahead, Miss Passon. Yes. Good evening, President Harper, Dr. Kane, members of the board and the executive team. I'm Bridget Passon. I'm the English Language Arts Supervisor for grades 3 through 12. Um, I have brought before you six novels tonight for consideration for adoption um, in various courses in grades 6 through 12. Mr. Smith, the two rejects that you're noticing on the novel Pride. Um, so the MOI committee was comprised of five people. Um, three of us would like to move this book forward. Um, two of the people on the committee have some reservations about putting it in sixth grade advanced. Um, having it as the majority of the MOI committee believe that it's suitable for sixth grade advanced, I'm bringing it to the board for final a, a final decision. As far as letting it out for 30 days Correct. for it, yes Correct. Okay. for just letting it out for letting it out for information yeah. okay. what was their re reasons for it? they found um, some of the uh, plot points in the book a little at, uh, advanced for advanced a little too advanced for the advanced sixth grader. Um, for example, there was one instance where the main character, Zuri, who is 16, um, notices through an Instagram picture that her 13-year-old sister is at a party where there's drinking. Um, Zuri had happened to be at the same party but made a decision to leave, went back and pulled her 13-year-old sister out of that situation and got her home safely. Um, they wondered about that situation. There was some language that they were curious about, um, that they thought there was a lot of um, of gratuitous language, inappropriate language. I read it, I did not find that to be the case, um, but through their lens, they did. Uh, I thought it was interesting that two of the people on the MOI committee were our parents. So Ms. Enzer and Ms. Carey, who served as community member and the principal, you know, also have sixth grade um, students. They both have, one has a sixth grade female student now, one has one in seventh grade and one coming up. So it was an interesting way that everybody kind of took the novel and digested it. Um, I have Ms. Rosendale's and Mr. McNeil's statements that they wrote as a rationale. If you'd like me to read them, I certainly will. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. I mean, we're just mm -hmm. wondering why, because we saw that on there and mm -hmm. questioning who, what had happened. I mean, and I just looked at the summary of this. I have not looked at those books, so I'm somebody I'm ill prepared to make a real serious comment. But when I see some of this stuff, it looked a little, and everything isn't like when you say what somebody looks at, they find suitable. Somebody else doesn't. It's very controversial on some of this, some of these issues. <coughs> and what I, and I see most of our committees are formed mainly of educators, parents, one, and one of them I saw is a retired educator doing it. Community members, uh, but community members, members. But, but has a, yep. They're not, and she's a very nice lady, and I have worked with her a very long time. But it comes to the educational system, I just would hope that these books are very available to the parents, yes. and they need to sit there and look at them. And I'm all for it if everybody's for it. But if there's some controversial things that people are going to have issues with, I'd rather know them now than later. And yeah. I think I, when I looked at this thing, and, I saw and, some. And of that's it. what and that's, this review period yes. is all about. I know, but we yeah. need to get it out to people. And they will. It's available. Well, they do, but I don't. You know, I mean, I really question it if people are going to really look at it. All of a sudden, they're going to we're going to approve it, be in the system, and then six months or a year from now, some parents going to come in and say, "What in the devil did you do that book for this age group or whatever?" We'll be very transparent with with parents, even if they do get adopted. Um, parents will know ahead of time what the books 
that are on the docket for students to read. Students will have choice in the books. Parents will have choice in the books. Parents can always look at a book or the book list we're going to teach, and if they don't feel comfortable with something in it, we can provide another book for their student their student to read. So this is as as so any, much so as any parent can opt out any book mm -hmm. these being out. if any they book. don't feel comfortable with it. Yep, and we can still work the whole class towards the same mastery assessment and looking at the same literature or uh, literature standards. Um, but if they choose not to read this book, and this book Pride mostly focuses on class structure. Mm -hmm. Um, and family structure as well, um, and it really gives gives it. It's a remix of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, um, so and it's it's done very well and very tactfully. Um, but yes, choice and transparency with parents, absolutely. And I hope some parents are watching tonight and do you know right. pick up. The well, book I, th I think they need to because <coughs> you know, and what I might look at, and you know, there's a wide age group up here with us. If people just look at things different, and with you certainly, with different. And I just <laughs> want make parents to know what. What their, when their kids go to these classes, if something's like this, because they're part of it, and that's that's what Absolutely. we need to have it, and we need involvement. And some of this stuff I just read, which only here, and I did not read this book, so okay. I'm gonna. Would you like say, to? I, I probably get one or two on the way out of here, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's it, it, it's only it's acceptable to our system and our group. That's all. And I have no negative thing. It's just when I see some of this stuff, it, there's some flags go up to me. Is it possible to? Instead of being advanced ELA six, maybe seven or eight, where it's a little more, I mean, that's a little more maturity, a little more growth. Certainly. I, I find a sixth grader reading this, I, I would have trouble with it myself. Uh -huh. Now, an eighth grader, maybe, maybe not, you know. Another question I had in English 9 Honors grade nine, the distance between us mm -hmm. under critical issues, sexuality should be checked, it's not because you make a reference to something that happens in the book, so I, I just want to, on this page, it should be checked. Did we put... You didn't check it, you didn't make a check on it, just let oh, you know. we put page 295, yeah. but just the line above just, it. Just, yeah, just X checked. it. Just put an X on it that there is something in it. Okay. I mean, it has a reference to it. Um, I, I went through these, I, I just only the which you have provided us with. I, I would have trouble with reading myself, um, but I, I have two girls at home that will tell me that if I try to censure books that go out to the public, I might as well live in Nazi Germany, so therefore I'm not going to stand in the way of this at all. Doing it. It's a critical time. It's a great opportunity. These books kind of just bring a lot of the issues that we've always been dealing with in literature. We have always dealt with right. family structure, class structure, racism. Um, they just put it in the context of the past 10 to 20 years, um, which we want kids to, we want our students to see themselves in these books. And, you know, yes, they can read To Kill a Mockingbird and have powerful conversations on racism, which I just witnessed in a ninth grade classroom at Ken Island High School last week. Um, but consider how much more powerful it would be to look at The Hate You Give, you know, published in 2017, look at Star's code switching that she does between her private school, you know, and, and her life in a black community where she doesn't go to school with all her friends. It just, and the, and the police brutality there. Um, they just provide a much more powerful lens at having these conversations that, to which our students relate more to. So I understand the concern, um, but it's a critical time for us to, to look at our options and look at grant funding that we can use to kind of revitalize our curriculum so that all of our students see themselves in, in our books. These books for the public are available here. I see the books there. <coughs> More than one copy somewhere else or someone can all them? No, there's just, we just provide. When we have review, we leave the books here Correct. so that okay. people can come to one location, get the books here. If there's ever a parent, I have copies of them. I'm sure Ms. Um, Passon can get, if there are more than one person, if there's one, more than one person that wants it, we can make sure that they get, okay. get it. And they can read, and, is, and this is on our board docs for everybody to see. Yes, so our in. request is yes, that we put it out for review so everybody can see it um, and, and share their opinion. So, uh, right, I, you know, I ahead. very heavily suggest that the public looks at this because that's what we're doing it for, and I think they need to be a major player, and, uh, you know, they need to be involved. So just to clarify, this is just for informational purposes only. There uh, is the MOI approval, novel adoption for secondary novels, the request for six new novels in the secondary language, 
to go out for the public to view. There is a fiscal impact of $21,000. Uh, the sub -budget, budget source being the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant Year 3. So there's nothing in this budget. Uh, it's a grant. Um, but for the most part, this is the, it's not requiring an action on our part, only just information for the purposes only. And thank you very much for bringing it to our attention, Ms. Passon. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. One more thing, Director. Ms. Passon. I would recommend to um, looking at the committee that you use, for the younger ages in particular, try to get a parent of that age group. Uh, I know you did, did some, but like even this ninth, this 11th grade one, I mean, it, I don't see any parents in there, grandparents, and their information, knowing the grandparent there, that it's probably an old, you know, older, older grandparent. Yeah, so while we have the public's attention, um, you know, we're working to have our reading specialists and our English chairs do a lot of the gathering of, commi of committees, um, as am I. We've got our librarians on board, but any community member that wants to be part of an MOI committee, you know, can please contact me. Um, my email's on the website, uh, bridget.passon at qacps.org. I would really welcome um, parent members, and I'll be meeting with some other groups. I meet with the uh, Educational equity committee next week to speak with them about this and I'll be begging them to read so I know as board members you can't be readers of these but if you have any readers or love any readers in your lives send them my way and I can set them up with a book because I plan to bring you a few more as we go through the next couple uh, months. They could actually the the reading specialists can get a hold of the PTA and mm -hmm. get some parent volunteers of those age groups is what I recommend because they're the ones that will have to explain it when there's questions. Right, right. Great. Contact, contact the principals of the schools and they'll get you in touch with the, the PTA members. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent idea. Thank you, Captain Kelly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Captain Kelly. Mm -hmm. Next up, Thank the... You. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Next is a textbook review for Math 8 and Algebra 1. This, again, is just informational purposes to go out for the public to see. Um, it's a contract period, June, July, 20, July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2026. Fiscal impact of $189,623, budget source being? The, being the capital budget. Capital budget capital of 2020. Tax. So the current capital budget. Correct. And what are, Correct. and these books are? So they're both in, so for Math 8 and for Algebra 1, um, which we offer Algebra 1 not only in 8th grade, but we also offer that in ninth grade as well. Um, and I know, Ms. Smith, I'll invite her up here if you've got more specific questions as it relates to the text. There is a, uh, a consumable that's attached to this as well. That's also included uh, in the price, so that's not something, uh, and I'll give you an example, just as in the budget, the science, where we asked for the additional uh, science um, consumable, that was not in that original. It is in this, so it'll be something that will be ongoing, but we currently have the capital funds to be able to um, purchase these materials for the upcoming school year. Great. Good it's evening. An, it, Good it's evening. already an approved capital budget. It's Yes, it's in the current FY20, correct. There's it's money approved. there to be able to do that. That's correct, Mr. Smith. Good evening, Ms. Harper, Dr. Kane, board members. Um, for the record, I'm Amy Smith, super, uh, supervisor for K-12 mathematics and gifted Medic. and talented. <laughs> I think where it was. <laughs> Queen Anne's County. At Queen Anne's County, sorry. <laughs> um, the consumables are, eighth grade, they are fully consumable. The Algebra 1, it is a hardbound text, so um, I'm working with the company to have classroom sets so that there's ones there and then the students would have basically a copy they could stay at home. It doesn't necessarily have to transport all the time. Um, and then it does come with a consumable for more for some practice or homework type things for the students and that they can do some notes in as well. And that is replenished for the six years of the contract. Um, basically, it actually fills in a, a pretty closely, a little bit more, but it is close to the amount that is currently allocated for Algebra 1 and 8th grade in Agile Line. So it's not like we're looking at a total huge increase on top of what is currently allocated in those funds. It also does have an online component that goes with the instructional part and that's all included in that price as well. It provides um, intervention resources so students who may not actually be able to get an intervention and in high school many of the students who are in that double block 
class because they are struggling with a lot of the algebraic concepts. They don't have a purposeful um, actual intervention course set up for them, even with the Agile Minds online components, there's not intervention to help fill some of those learning gaps for them, where this program actually has it automatically built in. It has materials that are right with the instruction going, as well as then intervention supports to help with the students there too. So you highly recommend? I do. It's, um, it is a Pearson product. The Pearson product is yes. where our assessments are also the platform that they are using for our MCAP assessments. And so all of their tools are actually right in line with the assessments. Right now we have kind of a mismatch where we're trying to match students with some of the online capacities. And this would that just be almost seamless for them and some of the practice skills that we could actually use in the classroom because it's the same platform as well. Great. So this is an assessment for high school graduation. It is the assessment for high school graduation. Okay. And part of the reason why they selected with the eighth grade, that eighth grade class is the ones that we, we find that are struggling oftentimes as they go into Algebra 1. And so we're really trying to fill in a lot of those gaps because we know once they get to high school, there's not a in-between step for students who are on grade level or slightly below. So we need to make sure that we're putting those right um, standards in place with the right support systems for all of those students. We still are offering pre-algebra in seventh grade, correct? We offer math seven and advanced seven. And advanced seven is technically like a pre-algebra course. It's a um, part seventh grade standards and all of the eighth grade standards. So it still is an advanced tracking. We just don't call it pre-algebra. And then we have the algebra one and eighth grade. And then algebra one and eighth grade. Thank you. The students that enter these algebra courses and this is, goes back a long time. My cousin couldn't grasp algebra, and they found out that her reading comprehension wasn't up to the grade. Uh, are we sure that part of this problem of grasping algebra, I, you know, algebra has been around for a long time. Uh, <laughs> that it, it might be the way it's described, and the student is not putting it together because of comprehension. So there always is um, a, a point of some students having a comprehension component. The nice thing about the mathematics assessment is that there's no limitation on which students can have the read readable text for them during the assessment. So students who may not qualify for reading features for their English language arts, but yet we know there's still some comprehension components there. They can actually have the readability feature and with these products and the online components, they can actually turn on the reading feature for them as well. So there is that, that support that's naturally built in with the, the text and the online resources. Anybody else? Again, this is out for a 30 day read. The books will be here, Mr. Paluski? Yep, they're right behind yes. Mr. Paluski okay. as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So that's for information. And the 189, we pay, I know you paid it for three years, <clears throat> but since it's budget and this capital, what you just pay a, it's the 189s, the 189s in this past, in this current budget. So you'll just take 40, whatever number it is, and pay it each of the three years. So to give you an idea. You won't come back next capital, the following capital, and ask for. Thank no, we'll, and, and that's part of our whole process of reprioritizing whatever the allocation that we'll get in the following year. But we have enough that's allocated right now to be able to, I mean, they certainly give us options if we can pay it. Often what happens is in our capital budget that you see that we're, like this year, we've got an additional 175000 So when we don't, often what we have to do is pay for something over a three-year period of time just because of other priorities. But there is enough um, in this current capital budget to be able to pay for that. Because I just don't, I mean, when you sign a contract and you don't have enough money paid for it and you got paid over three years, you're, you're committing yourself sure. to more money that you don't have. So that you might not have. So just to give you an idea of the money, uh, for the <coughs> mathematics grade 8, it's $46,022 for a three-year contract. In the Algebra 1, it is $114,048 for a three-year contract. And we have enough funds to pay these outright when we go. And we will have them in time for the next school year. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And, and we'll have curriculum already written. Well, and that's why we're, we're coming to you right now. Good yes. connection there, Mrs. Harper. <laughs> <laughs> already have teams established. 
to support. She's anxious, Feed to, them. Get, she's anxious to get started. <laughs> okay. Feed that's them. That's extra money. <laughs> money. That's the money from this year. That's a little yes. Money. Feed them. This All right. Summer. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you. Very nice to see you. I nice see you. Next on our items uh, for current action items, policies for first read to the Title IX policy number 528 and its regulation number 528.1. And the school district calendar policy number 647 and regulation number 647.1. Any questions from the board on these two policies? Just, just one thing to clarify, Ms. Harper, and maybe I've missed that. That, Go ahead. that was approved. Both of those were approved for a 30 day review by the board, correct? It says on here policies for first read. That's why I'm asking. No, I'm the textbooks. I'm sorry. I'm back one. Well, again, these are just action items. The, this is uh, for informational purposes. We won't have an action item until 30 days is over. So we will be doing this first week of May? April. April. Will we do it? Oh, that's right. A April. April 1st. Yeah, but that's not 30 days. Well, we, we changed that policy so that it, it's to the next board meeting. And that's even better. So next time we'll say next board meeting. Okay. okay. So we will vote on this in April. Is that is that right, sir? And the same thing with the novels. Where's Ms. Passon? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Policies, another near and dear to my heart. They're just going out for the first. They are going out for read. first read. Has anyone, does anyone have any questions or comments about these policies? And again, I have to thank the policy committee for putting up and showing up and doing all this great work because we have so many that need to be still done and I am very grateful. Sure so, any other questions, comments? Okay, so do I have, I'm going to lump them together, please. Do I have a motion to send out for first read Title IX policy number 528 and its regulation number 528.1 and the school district calendar policy number 647 and the regulation number 647.1? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for a vote on the motion on the two policies, policies that were currently listed. All those in favor, raise your hand say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Expenditure report. Mr. Fister, do we have any money? Yes, we have money. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. May not be in the right spots, but right now we have money. <laughs> um, thank you, Board Chair Harper, Dr. Kane, Board members. Uh, before you tonight is information, the standard monthly uh, financial report, um, and it is run as of today. Um, we always have a a little bit of a conflict when we have payroll in the same week as a board meeting. Uh, so I had to wait till today to actually run this. Um, but all categories are in a positive balance with the exception of transportation as we expected and actually discussed last month. Um, I'm analyzing uh, along with my team all expenditure lines and we're going to be performing some uh, projections in hopes of finding savings in other areas to offset this overage. I expect to bring to this board a transfer request for your approval at our board meeting next month and be happy to answer any questions you may have. I see in our contractual services were 125, so that's what, just because we we haven't we got positions we haven't filled. We're using contractual people. And in the transportation category? Oh no no no! I'm in. Uh, I'm sorry. I might be telling you the wrong place. It's I'm in. Uh, costs. Category five, instructional. Instructional costs. Other. What you're seeing there is the contracted school psychologist because we can't. Get one. Get one. And part of this reconciliation will be moving, hopefully, some salary savings that we've seen into the contracted line there to help offset that negative. And the uh, transportation deals a lot with special ed, I'm assuming. Having to and the special ed, that, a lot of that is running the overtime and the additional drivers needed because of the homeless and the special ed, and especially running to the other side, the non-public placements. Uh, we've had an increase of three students this year so far, perhaps more as we Because our, our special ed, we're at 131. That's category six. Um, yes, that's your non-publics. Right. Yeah, that's the actual cost of the education, and then the reflection of the transportation for that is in student transportation. I mean, that's our driver. There. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, it is. Um, the other thing is driving student transportation, as we talked, is uh, bus insurance. You know, the rates increased this year above our budgeted level, and as we discussed with Dr. Kane, you know, these are those operational, consistently underfunded issues that we have to address somehow, um, because we just can't constantly cover these. Uh, reductions or uh, the shortages from other areas. It's not a good budgeting or fiscal practice. So this is March. You're going to come back to us in April. With a, with a, a categorical budget transfer and to fix a lot of this and to get an idea of where we will be at the end of June. Before the end of the year. Yes, absolutely. And that will be a constant thing for the next couple months as we get closer to the year. Things happen. 
Uh, I think we've been fortunate with a mild winter, so hopefully that some of those utility costs will look at those. Um, but transportation and special ed, like we've been talking about probably since September, October, is starting to rear its ugly head a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. Yay, no snow. Yay, no snow. <laughs> yes. Okay, any other Money questions? That, huh, or, Sue? Any other questions or comments on the expenditures report? Mm -hmm. Um, board members, I, ha I apologize, I have to go back. I'm not as versed in parliamentary procedure as I thought. The uh, textbooks and the novels re review, we do have to have an action item. We do have to vote on them to go out for a 30-day read. I apologize for that. I'm going to make a one fell motion is, uh, or say it real loud. Is that all right? So we can just get this done? Okay. So do I have a motion to send out for a 30-day read the textbook review for Math 8 and Algebra 1? and the MOI approval of the novel of six new novels for secondary language arts and English courses. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Just a comment. The comments I made earlier, they need to be really strongly looked at and I think the public really needs to, stakeholders need to take a serious look at some of this stuff. Is that I, a question on the motion, sir? No, it's a question. That I just want okay. to make sure this is motion we're putting through and I just think it needs to be reviewed very detailed because I don't, I'm, I'd much rather have it that done now than six months from now. We hear too much. Thank you, sir. Hearing no questions or comments on the motion, I call for a vote on the motion to accept to go out for a 30-day read, the textbook review for Math 8 and Algebra 1, and the MOI approval and option, do, novel adoption for six new novels for secondary language arts and English courses. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much for your indulgences. Okay, transfer notice. This is something that we've decided to put on our agenda, whether we have one or not. And we do not have one. Okay, thank you, Mr. We will Christy. have a uh, not only a notice next month, but we'll also have a uh, request. Well, we'll, we'll know more. Yes. Okay, that's fantastic. Yes, we have a second uh, community participation and public comment area. Anyone like to come up and thank you for staying for the we meeting. We the appreciate case. that. Uh, future school board meetings. We have decided that we do not need a March 11th tentative school board. That is correct. Did you get that, Mr. Strait? We don't need you next week. Okay. However, we do need you on Wednesday, March 18th, which is, on, as you all know, in our handbook that we meet, uh, normally meet. Uh, we will be talking about items. Sure. Certain. That's correct. Okay, great. Uh, the complete list of our rest of our school year 2019-2020 school board meetings are online on our Facebook page, our website. And does anyone else need to add anything? Any, anything you want to add to it? I need a motion to uh, reconvene into executive closed session. Do I have a motion? To move. I have a second. He's yeah, making a motion. Pursue to general provisions Article 3-305 3-104. I move that we meet in closed session to consult with council. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. A motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to go to executive closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Have a pleasant evening.